I'm Susan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. So in today's video, as you can see the title, I'll be talking about the International Engineering Alliance. This video could be seen as a sequel to my why what you should consider when you're pursuing an engineering degree video, which I will link in this video with an info card. Please be sure to check that out because that's where I talk about the Washington Accord and I decided to do a more in-depth and in-detail video regarding what that accord is and what the International Engineering Alliance is. So if that's something that's interesting to you as an engineering student or an engineering professional, please stay tuned and I hope this video is as informative and helpful as I want it to be. Before we get into the video, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, Please comment, it helps the video um, get suggested to other people on their timelines and their feeds. And I would just really appreciate the support for my channel as I grow it and I hope to continue sharing information with you all. So let's get into the video. So what is the International Engineering Alliance? Fortunately for you, I did all the heavy lifting and hard labor of combing through their website reading all the information and summarizing it into this video just for you. I'll be sure to link their website in the description down below. Be sure to check it out if you want more information or to corroborate everything that I'm telling you in this video. So let's get into it. The International Engineering Alliance is a global non-for-profit non organization with members in 49, 41 jurisdictions and 29 countries. So the mandate of this body, of this not-for-profit organization, is essentially they created international agreements that govern the recognition of engineering qualifications and professional competence. And their mandate, as stated on the website, is that they're working together to advance the educational quality and enhance global mobility within the engineering profession. So essentially, high-level overview is these countries came together and established a set of benchmarks you know and agreements to vet each other's qualifications and engineering um, degree programs you know in order to uh, mobilize you know <laughs> like mobility mobilize mobility but yes in order to increase mobility within the engineering profession meaning that if i study somewhere where my um if i study in a country that is part of this international engineering alliance and i want to practice in another country that is also part of this engineering alliance it means my competency and my qualifications will not be questioned because they are set against that international benchmark that these countries came together and agreed on and isn't that just easy and great because you know how challenging it can be when you move to another country and you have to go through all these hurdles of like getting your qualifications recognized or getting your competency recognized so i think this is a great initiative that has been curated and developed for the engineering profession that allows us to you know move with ease all over the world and translate and transfer our experience from one country to the next so how does the International Engineering Alliance do this? How does it set these international benchmarks and standards? So how they do that is they developed educational accords, which are the international benchmarks for um, yeah, accredita accreditation of engineering degree programs, engineering technology programs, and engineering technician programs. And then they also developed international agreements or competency agreements, which that are, those are the international benchmarks now for professional competency in the engineering professions of engineering engineers, technologists, and technicians. So now I'm going to get into detail about what are the educational accords that they have you know set up and signed, and what are the competence agreements that they have also set up and signed that allow engineers to move within within these jurisdictions with ease and you know global mobility as they said so stay tuned let's get into the accords educational accords part of this video the three educational accords that the international engineering alliance have developed are the washington accord 
the Dublin Accord and the Sydney Accord. So each accord, the name of it just means where it was signed. So there's nothing um, significant per se about the name beyond that. But the commitment of all these accords is geared towards the development and recognition of good practice in engineering educational programs at a tertiary level. So the reason there are three accords is because they're broken down to explicit, specifically, I go into detail for each section of um, or tier of engineer. So the Washington Accord speaks to the programs that are geared towards engineers education. So the engineering professionals education, it was first signed in 1989 and it has 20 signatories and eight provisional signatories. So the, that accord specific mandate is about development and recognition of good practice in engineering educational programs for engineer for engineering professionals and then the dublin accord same commitment where that it's speaking to the development and recognition of that specific educational program but in this case it's for engineering technicians and it also has its own signatories which are nine thus far and lastly, we have the Sydney Accord. Same commitment, as I said, all ed educational accords have the same commitment, which is yes, the development and recognition of good practice in engineering educational programs. But the Sydney Accord speaks to technologist engineering, um, yeah, engineering technologist educational programs. So the reason they broke it down into this detail is because if you work in the engineering profession or you're an engineering student, you are aware of the fact that we have engineers, engineering technicians and engineering technologists. So I'm pretty sure at this point in the video, you're asking yourselves, what is the difference? And I would get into it, but I don't want to go into it into too much detail, but I just want to let you know that as you go from engineer to engineering technologist to engineering technician, the roles kind of go from conceptual, which is what engineers are like mostly known for doing, like conceptual design work and innovation and all that stuff, problem solving. And then it goes down to technologist and then technician. And as it goes um, down the list, it, they are becoming more hands on with the practical engineering experience that they do and that their educational programs um, entail so but we all work together and I wish it was harmony because some engineers out there still think they're better than technologists and technicians and I just want to put this out there that that is not true because we all need each other and we all work in conjunction together to deliver sustainable engineering solutions so as engineers, sure, we work in the design office, we conceptualize stuff, but it's the technologists and technicians who also help us to make those designs realistic and implement them in the real world. So I'll link some videos and articles explaining the difference between an engineering technologist, an engineering technician, and an engineer. Be sure to check them out in the description, and I'll link some YouTube videos in the info card as well. So now we're going to get into the international competency agreements and it'll just be a quick run through over the agreements that exist and then we'll close out this video. So the International Engineering Alliance has four competency agreements. So three of those competency agreements are global and one is region specific. So the three competency international competency agreements are the International Professional Engineer Agreement, the International Engineering Technologist Agreement, and the Agreement for International Engineering Technicians. So again, you can see that even the competency agreements are broken down into engineer, engineering technologist, and engineering technician. And then lastly, the regional-based agreement is for the Asia-Pacific, economic for 
Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. So that is region. It's um, it's also globally recognized, but it's for that specific region. And something that they did state in the website, for example, is that um, countries in the A PEC, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, can join the International Professional Engineer um, Agreement, but they're all globally recognized. So if you already belong to the International Professional Engineering Agreement, you don't have to join the Asia Pacific one, like if you're not in that territory. So it's specifically for organizations that regulate in the engineering profession and their accredited programs in that specific territory so as i said these agreements are the ones that you know govern the accreditation of engineering competence in the profession so essentially if you worked or studied in a country that belongs to one of these global agreements and you want to move to another country that is within this global agreement you can do that seamlessly because everyone came together to agree on an international benchmark and standard that allows you to yeah move seamlessly because your qualification and your competency is recognized because of that agreement so yeah that's it with regards to the information about the international engineering alliance if you really do want to know more the history about these accords how these countries came together and agreed on this you should check out their website again it's in the description below and i must note that um, because i studied my engineering degree in south africa that south africa is a signatory for all these accords that i mentioned the washington accord the dublin accord and the sydney accord which govern the engineering educational programs for engineers technologists and technicians so closing out this video i'm going to talk about why is it important that the country or region you work in if you have the opportunity to choose is part of these signatories it's important because it's important that the country you study your degree in or you know get your competence in um are part of these signatories just yes for the case sake of global mobility and also just global recognition of your qualification who does not want to have a globally recognized qualification because as the world evolves and becomes this basically global village where although border control is getting harder and more difficult um, so borders are becoming more rigid than they used to be porous but it enhances your mobility because you know once you have your professional competency and you're able to like get roles outside of where you studied or where you live this just helps it like it helps it just be so much easier if where you studied or where you worked is part of this international agreement i must put the disclaimer that this is for people who have the choice of where they can study and i just want to say that even if you don't just having your qualification and your degree already just sets you up for better opportunities in the world you just have to keep on pursuing and chasing the opportunities that you desire and hopefully you catch a break in this life and you're able to get the things that you want so in as much as having a choice is speaking from a place of privilege this in this video and this information is just to be put out there so that you can be aware and you can be you know more intentional about your the pursuit of your career especially if you want to be a global citizen as i consider myself a global citizen due to the circumstances that i was born into as an immigrant but i hope this video helps you as an engineering professional if you're planning on moving to another country or it helps you as an engineering student if you are you know already studying and looking into you know job opportunities and lastly if you are considering studying engineering i hope this video also helps you make a decision if you have the capability to do so so thank you for watching this video please be sure to like comment and subscribe 
let me know in the comments down below whether this information was helpful did you know about this international engineering alliance as you studied your degree is it relevant information to you or like are you just happy practicing engineering where you studied and where you're living so yeah please let me know guys and if you want to see more videos about the engineering profession um well specifically civil engineering because i'm a civil engineer please let me know and i'll see if i can be able to make those videos but please be sure to understand that this channel is not for technical tutorials because i'm still working on my cad skills so i'm not in a capacity to teach anyone cad or vba programming at this point in time so anyway thanks for watching please be sure to check out my what you should consider before studying engineering video and some of my other content as well in my career conversations playlist if that's not up your alley watch my travel vlogs i'll link them in the description below and if that's still not up your alley i don't know search my channel and find content that you like just for you see you in the next video and thank you so much for watching i can't wait to engage with you in the comments bye